All right, we're going to show you how to make a prediction model using seasonality. So first of all, seasonality is where there's a chunk of time where the value of something or the demand of something goes up, and then it goes down, and it goes up, and it goes down, depending on the seasons. That's where the word seasonality comes in. So we're going to use quarters as seasons. They don't have to be quarters. They could be years. They could be decades. They could be weeks. All right, first thing we're going to do is highlight the data to make sure they uh, that there is the peaks and valleys over the seasons. Very important. If there's not, don't do this. I'll say that again. If there is not a clear period of time where they go up and down, where the values fluctuate, don't use this process. Okay, so we're going to go to insert. We're going to take a quick look at a line graph. Doom, there it is. And you can see, yes, there are peaks and valleys that are pretty stable, right? At like every fourth quarter, it goes high. At another four quarters, it goes high. Yeah, so it's got this it's got this equal period of time where the values go up and down. So I cleaned it up a little. Okay, so the next step is this. So slide your graph out of the way, right? You need some working room. You need to set up a table like this. So quarters, here's the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, and here are the years. So you're going to transfer this data, right? Here's 2013 to four quarters. Copy. Pasty. You're going to do all of them. Here's 2014. Copy. Pasty. So you don't need me to watch me to do all this. So hold on one second. That was easy, right? So this data right here is simply from this chart right here. Okay, so we need the total of each one. We're going to go to auto sum. Be careful. We don't want the year in there. Just highlight the actual data. Hit enter. Okay. Once you got that one in, just go ahead and paste the formula all the way across. Do the same thing for averages. We're going to go to the function bar. We're going to make sure you're in statistical. And we're going to use average. And we want the average from the quarters. Again, don't get the don't get the total in there. Boom. And put it at the four decimal places. So there's the average of 2013, and we'll just highlight those. So now how we have all the totals and the averages. So now we're going to fill this this matrix in down here with the individual quarters compared to the year average. Okay, so let me show you how to do that. Go ahead and click the first cell. Go to the function bar, hit equal. So I want quarter one of 2013, which is 92, divided by 2013's average, which is that number. So here's a big shortcut. I, I've remembered how to freeze a cell. You go back up into the function bar, hit a dollar sign before the G, and another one after the G. You'll see how cool that is here in a second. So we hit enter. So in other words, 92 was about 91.77% of 10025. So click back into the cell that you just put this formula in, and then you're going to drag it down. And it doesn't lose sight of the tr of which is the divisor, okay? So look at here, quarter four, it's still dividing by the average. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat that for every one. So 2014 is going to be equals... H4, right, the first quarter of 2019, divided by 2014's year average, which isn't very high. And then I'm going to go back up into the function bar and put a dollar sign here in front of the H and a dollar sign behind the H. And I'm going to hit Enter. And I'm going to click that cell with the formula in it, drag it down for 2014, and there's that. So what these numbers mean is... Let's just pick one. This 10946. That means that the fourth quarter in 2014 is about 9% higher than the average, which was 97.75. Okay, that's what this means. These are the percentages of the averages. So this is lower than average. Anything over one is higher than average. Okay, so give me a second while I fill in the rest of these. Ta-da! So these are our percentages. So now we have to find an average of each quarterly change. So click this cell, go to the function bar, you want statistical, you want average, click OK. And this time we're going to go this way. And 
one, click OK. So there's that one, and we're just going to highlight that one down. So here's here's the average change by season. Again, if it's less than one, that means it's less than the average. If it's greater than one, that means it's greater than the average. So when you add up these average seasons, it should equal the number of seasons. So I'm going to add these up, and it should be four. And it is. Okay, so we did this part right. So let's pretend somebody else gave us some predictions for 2017. Okay, so they're expecting a total of 405. If you look up here at the regular totals, that's not too much of an increase, right? With the averages of 102, same thing. The averages are all hovering around 100 anyway. So with these figures, we're going to go ahead and predict the quarterly sales. So you're going to pull it, uh, pick the first cell, 2017 quarter one. You're going to go to the function bar. You're going to hit equals. You're going to click on the quarter one average there. And then you're going to hit shift eight. That means multiply. That little star means multiply by the average. Okay. Bam. Enter. So there it is. You're, you should get about 93.34% stock prices, whatever we're measuring here. Yeah, the average stock price. And then again, I'm going to go up and do my... Um, my little trick here with the dollar sign in front, dollar sign behind, enter, and then I that allows me to just click and slide, and it should multiply everything by 102. And how about this last one? Get in there, you. Bam. So that should, I'm just double checking here, making sure everything's right here. So this says K16 which is this number, is that right, K16, yes, times G22, which stayed the same, good, yeah, so these are your predictions, that's it, MGZ, out.